Good Thursday, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Conversation Daily News. I'm your host, Cyrus Webb. Glad you all could join us once again. Well, we made it over the hump, and we're in the home stretch toward the weekend. We, of course, you have your news headlines coming up on this Thursday. With the truth of the day with Mary Ellen Tukanovich and into the entertainment spotlight, you've been part of my conversation with Dr. Gordon Postel discussing his new book called Enjoy Our Program. For Conversation Daily News, I'm Cyrus Webb with your Thursday headlines and international news. The Associated Press says there are evidence of 600 dead and Mariupol theater strike. Amid all the horrors that have unfolded in the war on Ukraine, the Russian bombing of the Academic Regional Drama Theater in Mariupol on March 16th stands out as the single deadliest known attack against civilians to date. An Associated Press investigation has found evidence that the attack was in fact far deadlier than estimated, killing closer to 600 people inside and outside the building. That's almost double the death toll cited so far, and many survivors put the number even higher. The AP investigation recreated what happened inside the theater on that day from the accounts of 23 survivors, rescuers, and people intimately familiar with its new life as a bomb shelter. The AP also drew on two sets of floor plans of the theater, photos and videos taken inside before, during, and after that day, and feedback from experts who reviewed the methodology. With communication severed, people coming and going constantly, and memories blurred by trauma, an exact toll is impossible to determine, says the Associated Press. The government estimated early on that about 300 people died and has since opened a war crimes investigation, according to a document obtained by the Associated Press. But the Associated Press journalists arrived at a much higher number through the reconstruction of a 3D model of the building's floor plan, reviewed repeatedly by direct witnesses. All the witnesses said at least 100 people were at a field kitchen just outside, and none survived. They also said the rooms and hallways inside the building were packed, with about one person for every three square meters of free space. Many survivors estimated around 1,000 people were inside at the time of the airstrike, but the most anyone saw escape, including rescuers, was around 200. The survivors primarily left through the main exit, or one side entrance, the other side and the back were crushed. In entertainment news, Dave Chappelle tackled during comedy show, Police Arrest Man. Comedian Dave Chappelle was tackled during a performance at the Hollywood Bowl Tuesday night, and a man was later arrested. Security guards chased and overpowered the attacker, and Chappelle was able to continue his performance while the man was taken away in an ambulance. The assailant was carrying a replica handgun with a knife blade inside, authorities say. Isaiah Lee, 23, was detained and arrested for assault with a deadly weapon. Lee was treated by medical staff for an unspecified injury and was booked into jail early Wednesday and held in lieu of a $30,000 bond. He was not immediately known at the time of this report if he had attained a lawyer. The police say a famous comedian was performing when Lee jumped onto the stage, tackled the celebrity, and produced a replica handgun containing a knife blade. The police say the department did not name the celebrity because it does not confirm victims' names. Chappelle was performing his stand-up routine on the last of four nights at the amphitheater as part of Netflix is a joke festival when the man rushed on stage and tackled him. Jamie Foxx was in the wings of the stage and Chappelle thanked him for responding to the attack. Chris Walk was there as well. He grabbed the mic and jokingly asked, was that Will Smith? In national news, U.S. quietly expands asylum limits while preparing to end them. The Biden administration has begun expelling individuals to Mexico under pandemic-related powers to deny migrants a chance to seek asylum, expanding use of the rule, even as it publicly says it has been trying to unwind it, officials said on Wednesday. The U.S. struck agreement with Mexico to expel up to 100 Cubans and 20 others a day from three locations, according to a U.S. official with direct knowledge of the effort. The expulsions begin April 27th and will end May 22nd, the official told the Associated Press, on condition of anonymity because the agreement has not been made public. In business news, Fed raises key rate by a half point and bid to tame inflation. The Fed Reserve intensified its fight against the worst inflation in 40 years by raising its benchmark interest rate by a half percentage point Wednesday, its most aggressive move since 2000, and signaling further large rate hikes to come. The increase in the Fed's key short-term rate raised it to a range of 0.75% to 1%, the highest point since the pandemic struck two years ago. The Fed also announced that it will start reducing its huge $9 trillion balance sheet made up mainly of treasury and mortgage bonds. Reducing those holdings will have the effect of further raising borrowing costs throughout the economy. And finally, in more business news, markets cheer after Powell downplays even larger rate hikes. 
the Dow Jones Industrial Average surged more than 900 points, and the S&P 500 had its biggest gain in two years Wednesday after Fed Chair Jerome Powell downplayed the likelihood of an even larger interest rate hike after announcing the sharpest rate increase since 2000. The remarks which came from the Fed announced the decision to raise its key interest rate by double the usual amount, allayed concerns that the central bank was on its way to a massive increase of three quarters of a percentage point at its next meeting in June. Cyrus Webb, Conversations Daily News. Yes, it's now time for the Truth of the Day with Mary Ellen Teganovic. Mary Ellen, take it away. Hi, this is Mary Ellen with your Truth of the Day. Stay grounded in the present moment. Focusing wholeheartedly on the duties of your day will help you to direct your attention on the obligations that are most important. Worries flee from your mind because worry has no foothold in the now moment. Stay entirely focused on the current now moment as you do your best. There is no thought of failure. Concentrate as you focus on the details of your current project as you finish your tasks efficiently and effectively. Today, stay grounded in the present moment. Focus as you enjoy the day. We are part of my conversation coming up with Dr. Gordon Postel in today's Entertainment Spotlight. Stay with us. You're listening to Conversation Daily News. For Conversation Daily News, I'm Cyrus Webb with the Entertainment Spotlight. Dr. Gordon Postel joined me on Conversations Live, the radio show, to talk about his book called A Long Shot Story. Here's a bit of our conversation. You know, we talk about in this program all the time that we all know that we have something. Um, that we were meant to do. But it's another thing to actually get about the assignment of doing it, even though we know we're not going to always get it right, even though we know that people aren't always going to believe in us and, and believe in that in that purpose. What has that been like for you to share your journey and to see the way people are connecting with it? Yeah, well, first of all, um, uh, sharing my journey. Um, you know, I chose to share my journey primarily about a pivotal decade uh, 1970 to 1980, when I was 21 to 31 years old, and uh, in, in March of 1970, I was on the verge of sailing a second straight year at a Ivy League university in in uh, Kingston, Ontario, in Canada. Basically, my life felt meaningless. I'd been on a deceitful, debauched romp of endless thrills and delights for three years, and I knew that that was on life support. Uh, and I found myself um, down by Lake Ontario on a very cold day. The, the big ice on Lake Ontario was breaking up, and before I knew it, I was jumping from chunks of ice, uh, one, one chunk to the next chunk, and you know, I was like 300 feet away from shore, riding these fast-moving chunks of ice, falling into the frigid water, climbing back on. Didn't really care whether I lived or died. I think I really wanted to die. Survived that, but then my journey would take me to the nickel mines in northern Ontario, unemployment, run-ins with the law, security guard jobs, until a a really astonishing, out-of-the-blue spiritual epiphany, which I experienced as a call to ministry. Cyrus Webb, Conversations Daily News. We thank you all for tuning in to this edition of Conversation Daily News. Prepare to get on tomorrow to wrap up this week. Until then, I'm your host, Cyrus Webb, saying, as always, enjoy your day, enjoy your life, enjoy your world. Thank you all for choosing Conversation Daily News today. Let's make it a great one.